welcome fellow cardboarders a warm welcome to all my new subscribers while filming this video we are past 10 subscribers and on our way to 20 subscribers i'm looking forward to hearing from you all in the comments below now a couple of you asked about making a video and giving a deck list of my recent short regarding my 190 cards legal sliver commander deck. We're going to deep dive into it and at the end you know my thought process and how you could replicate this for a deck of yours. Quick overview, the idea of this deck is a sliver deck. You have the five sliver lords and 10 two colored slivers. You choose one of the five lords at random and put the rest of the four into the main deck, which is this category here. And then you choose one of the two colored slivers at random and also put it into the deck. The other nine are no longer in the game and you Play with the two colors you chose at random. So let's say you chose Simic at random, you would put this and four slivers into the main deck, having one in the command zone, for example the Hive Lord, and then you have 39 cards in the main deck, one commander equaling 40 cards, and then depending on which two colored sliver you picked or was picked for you at random or by a friend or whatever, you choose the respective two decks which each have 30 cards in them and also shuffle them into the main deck which equals 99 cards in total. At the end of the game you just pick it apart again which takes about a minute. The more often you do it the faster you are. Depending on sleeves or markers you use you could even be faster than I do. So now let's dig into the deck. Most of the two colored slivers are auto-include, for example, the black and red sliver alternatives are pretty bad. For example, the ghost flame slivers here seen on screen, just making all the slivers colorless is just useless. This is in my eyes the most useful Rakdos colored sliver, therefore I included him. And there were different others, like this Vindicate slivers just auto include and the aura shards sliver as well on the other hand the boros sliver i am still undecided which one is better maybe you want to let me know in the comments cloud shredder or lava belly but in the white and the red deck i have a flying and a haste enabler sliver which would mean either redundancy or giving a new effect to my slivers and being able to ping damage and gaining life which I chose therefore this one is still in my sideboard I could switch it up but I will probably stick with the lava belly sliver now the idea is playing five colored slivers but also two colored like you only play two colors the two colors of your sliver you chose at the beginning and then five colors for the Sliver Lords. Now let's dive into the main deck and see what my thought process was on creating that. Let's begin with the Mana Rocks. You do not need a Mox Diamond to play Slivers. Any mana rock that gives you mana will do, but I chose on purpose not putting in any two color signet or two color talisman, which would derail the purpose of playing specifically two colors. So most of these rocks will give you any color of mana. Some of them, like the Soul Ring, will only give you colorless. This one reduces colorless mana. My formula for this was 10 mana rocks, and I do not have any other mana generators in the decks. Also, a side note, my main deck consists of only artifacts, 
and no colored cards since this would make it almost impossible to pick a part again. So the main deck only consists of artifacts and multicolored lands and maybe utility lands. Let's look deeper. I put in three more utility cards, which I find useful, and three more artifact slivers, which are the only ones that exist, which are artifacts, and give me a higher number of slivers and also an easier way to just play any sliver with any colors. So maybe I have three colors and I can play my two colored slivers, but not my five colored slivers yet. And therefore I chose to put in these three, even though they are not the best, as you can tell. So here would be another room for improvement if you wanted to. If you wanted, you could remove two of these from the main deck and increasing the size of your side decks by one. Or maybe removing two cards and increasing them by two. The number in my head for the amount of slivers is around 30-ish slivers. I have, I think, 32 in my deck and one commander, which would make every third card in my deck a sliver, roundabout. Now, Skull Clamp obviously is great for just drawing cards, putting it on any sliver that just dies, maybe from the Sliver Queen, and just being able to pay one, equip it, and just draw two cards is just such a great thing protecting your sliver lords or important slivers, also a great thing. And this card I think not many people know about, I will put the translation on screen, which is lifeline, and whenever any creature in play dies, if there is still another creature in play, all those creatures that died will return to the battlefield at the end of turn. Which means most of the time people want to wipe the board, and my hope is that there will still be one creature that has indestructible, for example, and putting all the creatures back into, into play, especially my slivers. Or I have some slivers, for example, the Vindicate sliver that gives all my creatures the ability to sacrifice themselves, and then I would destroy something and get it back at the end of the turn. Or maybe the coin flip sliver, I don't know if many people know it, but I think it's great. Um, being able to flip a coin and just saving a sliver and just maybe just block a creature without it dying or even if it dies it would just return to play with the lifeline. Still trying that card out but I think it's a great card in creature based decks. Now let's look at the mana base next. I play Three fetch lands, I think you could put any fetch lands in it. I think having at least one of each color able to fetch is great. And then I have like twice green, which is good, I think. Even though I don't always play green, obviously. And then I play all the dual shock lands, but obviously you could upgrade it to only playing dual lands if you have the money for that. But I think just shock lands is a great start to begin. You could also go Triumphs, but I think if you put in all the 10 Triumphs, it would just be too slow having all the lands put into play tapped all the time, but it would fix your mana even better. But I think in this case, only playing five, five colored slivers would not justify putting having to put in three colored lands. Now let's also look at my utility lands. I play five, these five here. A Command Tower, of course. A Cavern of Souls, if you have. A Path of Ancestry, which is great for just scrying, since we're only playing slivers. A Volar Stronghold, not essentially necessary. You could just put in another five colored land or whatever, but I found it very, very useful to getting slivers back from my graveyard if they die for just one black and one colorless. And then this land, I don't know off the top of my head what it is in English, but I will put it on screen. If you don't control a creature at the end of your turn, you have to sacrifice it. Since we're playing a creature-based deck, we always have 
the option to play our commander or put a sliver into play in some way, you will have this mana out and it will give you any mana of any color. So I find this quite underplayed in my eyes. So this was the main deck. Again, that is 34 cards in total, adding four of the Sliver Lords into it, playing one as a commander, and then one random of the two colored slivers into it will add up to 39 and one commander. In total, 40, and then two of the 30 cards side decks. Now, let's dig in deeper and look at one of the side deck. Let's say we chose white and see what is in there. Now, I said I play basic lands. I play eight of each, which means each side deck has eight basic lands and no other color. And as you just saw, no basic lands in the main deck. Another formula which I used was 12 slivers. So here you see 12 good slivers, the best 12 I'd say. Some are less played, I think, than others. Some of them I just don't own yet, like the Vigilance Sliver for two mana from M14 here seen on screen, or the Constricting Sliver, which is able to exile creatures until it leaves the battlefield. So yeah, that just means that this deck is still improvable, but on the other hand you see slivers played that you normally don't see played when you just jam in the best, like let's say, 30 multi-colored slivers, one-colored slivers, whatever, just the 30 best slivers, and then you don't get to see like slivers like this, which enables flanking for all your slivers, or maybe this sliver here enabling regenerate for your slivers. So I find that very a nice addition to the deck that you are able to play slivers that you normally don't see. Now let's go deeper into the removal category. We have a Path to Exile, a Wrath of God, a Heliod's Intervention, which I think is still very underplayed. I love this removal. Being able to pay two white and X and being able to just destroy X artifacts and enchantments is just such a great way of dealing with your enemy's stuff. And being also able to just gain life actually sometimes saved me the game, so and sometimes even let me win the game, not with this deck in, in particular, but uh, with other decks. So yeah, just keep this card in mind. I think it's still undervalued and underplayed. And I also play True Love's Kiss, which I don't think many people know, um, just for being able to draw another card since white is so bad at drawing cards. As you might also have noticed, I do not play any removal or I will show you in a second card draw that is creature based just because I want to play only slivers so I don't play cards like Esper Sentinel or the like. Also the card Return to Dust I find quite useful for two, for two mana and two white being able to exile two artifacts and enchantments during your turn or one during an opponent's turn I find quite useful. Lastly, I use five card draw spells, which are those. I just love this Secret Rendezvous card, which is just such a great political card, which lets an opponent and you draw three cards for three. So great, better than Harmonize in my eyes, if you just make a friend at the table, so great. Being able to blink a sliver and drawing a card, I also find quite useful with um, Acrobatic Maneuver, which also draws me a card and sometimes activates enters the battlefield, effects on slivers again. This one I don't think many people know, I will put the English version on screen. This one allows every player to draw up to two cards, and if they want to draw less, they get two life for each card they don't draw then. And this is such a great Homelands card, I think it's even a rare, and I don't think it's more than 50 cents, maybe a euro, and it's such an undervalued political card, it's so great, you make so many friends giving your slivers protection from a color, also great mechanic. 
and being able to untap all your creatures and drawing another card also great. So now as you see, and we'll skip through the other colors a little quicker, we have eight basic lands, 12 slivers, five removals, and five card draw cards. This is a pattern that will repeat itself throughout the other colors. So let's look at the blue, starting with five basic lands, 12 blue slivers, as well as five card draw spells like Rhystic Study, Kindred Discovery, Coastal Piracy, Insight, and I'll put the name on screen, Borrowing 100 Arrows or something, which are not the best cards, some of them, like the last two especially, but I think they're just such a nice mechanic that keeps the game alive, trying to track the green spells that are played can yield so many cards. Now the five removal spells are these I chose, you could also put in a Cyclonic Rift, so that's a counter spell, a Raven form, Reality Shift, those two exile cards. This I think is also undervalued, Mystic Reflection can remove a commander that is being played and the player is not able to save it until it's removed in any way. So having it enter the battlefield as a whatever land of war elf is just so great. And you can foretell it and play it for one. I disabled so many commanders with this and it's still, I think, two bucks or maybe three. And a blue board wipe. Let's look at the black cards. Again, eight basics, 12 slivers. I just noticed this one is still a shapeshifter, which I have in there until I get another sliver, which I still need. One of the two I put on screen could be replacing this card. Then the five card draw, or in this case also tutor spells. This one draws three, this one just draws a bunch. This one gets me creatures out of the graveyard and two tutor cards, which are just great and I just couldn't pass on that. And being able to tutor any sliver out of the deck is just such a great way to get the cards you actually need. Last but not least, five removal cards. This one removes creature or enchantment, lets you lose life, damnation as a board wipe. And then I put in the sacrifice mechanic, which lets me sacrifice any sliver for one black and destroy a non-black creature. And whenever a creature on my side dies, every opponent has to sacrifice a creature themselves. And lastly, being able to also remove cards from the opponent's hands by letting them discard a card and also getting cards I didn't know where to put it. You could also say it's a sixth card draw and then one less removal. And most of the slivers or many of the slivers also have like some kind of removal ability. For example, this guy who lets you sacrifice a sliver to have everyone discard a card. To the red cards. By the way, I don't know if the camera already tracked this, but uh, don't worry about my arm. This one are scratches and I just donated some plasma. So that's why I'm wearing this, nothing to worry about. The red cards. So we have another eight basic mountains. I just love, by the way, the ruggedness and the spikiness of the Tempest lands. That's why I chose these basic lands over the others. And Tempest was also a great block for slivers that is the reason why i'm playing those now 12 slivers again who would have guessed by the way this sliver such sliver i'm able to play since it's red but it does have a black effect but i found it quite useful and since i'm playing black lands even though i maybe play boros or whatever i can still use this ability to regenerate all my slivers now the card draw is a harder thing to do in red. You could put in more wheels maybe to get a better card draw engine going. Um, I put in Jessica's Will just to be able to have this impulse card draw and exiling my cards and trying to play them all at once. And I put in like some looting effects where I discard cards and draw some cards. And this card I find very useful in most of the red decks by the way. Valakut Awakening, I often don't play it as a land, only if I really need it to. And most of the times I can like re-sculpt my hand and if I have like five 
useless cards or lands or whatever, I'm able to just draw, play this and draw six cards and get a new hand. If I don't want to lose all my cards, I can just get rid of some of them. And for the removal part, I could add some harder hitting cards if I wanted to, like some more board wipes like Blasphemous Act and the like. But I chose rather like spot removal like Chaos Warp, which is so useful. Tibble's Trickery to counter a spell in red is also so great, also underplayed, played more. Cleansing Wildfire is like a maybe card, I could remove it, but this one destroys like Chaos Cradles or whatever your playgroup plays, Cowl Coffers, Urborg. Maybe you want to keep the Urborg for yourself so you have the ability to tap for black. Anyways, and then you draw a card, so that's also nice that it replaces itself. And your opponent, I think, also gets a basic land tapped. Yeah, so that's a nice land removal for your opponents. And lastly, I wanted to talk about this card, which is so funny, Raging River, which lets your opponent at the beginning of your combat step split their creatures into left and right of the river, and then you choose where your slivers stand and attack through each pile. And I found it just such a funny card and I want to try it out more. And in an attacking red deck or half red deck, I just found it very useful and slivers just want to smack. So I just could not resist not including this card. Now to the greens. Lastly, that's eight basics, eight greens, uh, 12, sorry, 12 green slivers as well as five card draw cards or maybe also tutor cards and maybe I could say ramp but it's seven mana so I don't would it I wouldn't put it at ramp. This one probably ramp but also gets you a lot of cards so I find it's such a great card. Sad that it's so expensive but like that's just it. And then we have five removal cards which I found a little tricky in green which is a beast within a Crozen Grip. And then you could add more artifact and enchantment removal, but I also wanted to add like another permanent removal to be able to deal with anything and turn it into a tree. I found so great. Being able to just kill all your enemy's creatures is also so important. And since green does not have the opportunity to just wipe the board, the predation I found a good way to deal with your enemy's creatures, even though you get beasts which are not technically slivers, but I found it such a great board web that I could not not include it. And lastly, a heroic intervention, which I put at board uh, put at removals, but it's actually like just protecting your creatures, so you could say it's an anti-removal. So yeah. You'll find the whole deck list in the description. If you enjoyed this deck tech, let me know. Let me know if you want to build a similar deck or building this deck and just let me know your thoughts. I'll read you in the comment below and see you in the next one. Bye bye.